This is a comparison vi video of Elisha Johnson, who's the mayor of Rochester, New York, in 1838. Interesting thing about this photograph is it is the earliest photograph in our collection. Uh, it's a very, very early dag. I would date it to 1840 based on the case, uh, the lack of preserver in the case, clothing on the individual photographed here, uh, color of the photograph, uh, kind of a bluish gray, it is very, very early. Mr. Johnson also had a Phi Beta Kappa key on his belt, which is the earliest I could find of any photograph having that type of uh, key. I did find one from 1850 on the internet. And uh, there was no name in this, just like pure luck of finding out who this was. Started researching, uh, well, I always thought it was like a, some kind of a ship captain or something, just a lot of look of him. But then I thought, well, he had some books. And I thought that was a very, very early photograph to have books under his arm. So I thought maybe a professor and find out that he did the earliest Phi Beta Kappa organization was in William and Mary College. And I think I must have accidentally put in Williams College and there's a small photo off to the side that this coincided with him. It's pure luck, but as you will see, it is definitely the same man. What is also very interesting is this man here, being in Rochester, being a mayor in 1838, he did a lot of uh, construction work in the area. He also knew a Hiram Sibley. Hiram Sibley was the founder of Western Union Telegraph out of Rochester and uh, Hiram Sibley went into business with Samuel Morse of Morse Code fame in 1840. I know that Mr. Uh, Johnson here had left and went to Portage which is close by Rochester in around 1839 but the two men definitely knew each other. Uh, Mr. Sibley's daughter was married in the church that was built by Johnson and uh, Johnson was in was a presidential elector whatever they called it back then, in 1844 when the same time, it was a county elector I should say, and uh, at the same time that um, Mr. Sibley was the county sheriff. Um, Mr. Sibley, knowing Mr. Morris who had just gotten back in 1839 from France, having meeting Dagger, started dabbling in uh, making daguerreotype photographs. And as I stated, this is the earliest photograph I've ever held in my hands. It's extremely early. I've, I've taken some pictures that we'll have on the site. It's just a possible uh, link between this man and Mr. Morris. And We'll just do an overlay real quick here to show that we are comparing the same man. Um, I can only find one photograph of him. It was probably circa 1860 something, which is in Wikipedia, but it's poor quality. But you can see he had a cleft palate here, split in his nose. Just got that kind of a bulldog look to him, flat face, flat nose but definitely had the cleft palate here when he was born. This appeared to have been open most of his life, evidently. They didn't close it up. And we'll come out with the Wikipedia image. I have uh, emailed uh, the Smithsonian. They do have a painting, evidently, on file circa 1850. As soon as I get it, I'll be able to see how the painting correlates to uh, Mr. Johnson here. But you can easily see it's the same person. And we'll 
will come out with the Wikipedia image. And we'll go all the way to full image there. You can see the split in his nose. It's more evident right here. I had to blow the image up. It's not very large. But you can easily see how these two gentlemen fit in together. That sad mouth. You can actually see the cleft area. Let's go all the way to that image right here even though it's just white but you can see the nose right here you can see the split in the nose dead giveaway to the same man very very early circa 1840 dag with a possible connection to uh, Mr. Samuel Morris just started researching this it's been very very interesting Elisha Johnson.